It's like whatever you did wrong, know that you needed to do that wrong in order to get better the next time. You know, like you had to fuck that one up so that you could be as great as you are now. Like it's all part of the process. It's so funny. Like I knew that I had to do a set before the comedy store last night. And I went to the improv and just ate a bag of dicks because I fucking knew I was going to eat a bag of dicks. I just knew it. I knew that if I went in there loose, I'm the type of guy who would never be a good UFC fighter because you knock me out in the first round, it's over. I, I'm just getting started. Yeah. Once you knock me out, once I smell the smelling salts, what happened? He knocked you out. Wait a second. Give me five minutes. Give me one more shot at this. And now you have, I'm one of those guys. I yeah. got a second wind. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I'd be 0 and 11. <laughs> but I'd fuck. I'd be eight and eight and zero in the locker room against the guy afterward. Like I'd fuck him up and I'd get suspended or something like that. You know, like I'd knock him out with a karate kick. I, I understand that when I used to play basketball, I would be for the big games. I'd be so nervous that I'd intentionally make like hard contact with someone on a screen or something on defense. Sometimes get a foul called because I just needed to feel something hard. Like go straight as hard as I could to the hole. And to feel that contact and then like feel something and then I could loosen up. Like I had to get hit or hit somebody and then I was like, all right, now we're playing. Now we're playing. Then you have to like fall down and chase yeah, the ball. Exactly. Or something something where, like that. Where'd you get a basketball scholarship to? I forget. I didn't get a scholarship, but I went to University of Richmond and I was I had some, you know, state honors for uh for high school basketball play with a nationally ranked team. You know, I could play, but I knew that I wasn't going to the NBA. Did so you I kind walk of veered away. University of Richmond? No, I just played with no. I played with the team for a bit, but um, never made the floor. See, that's what gave me the blueprint for comedy was basketball. Like I loved basketball when I was a kid, but I was fucking horrible. (laughs) And the year I made the team, we went zero and nine to even make me feel worse. (laughs) And that summer, I swore that was never going to happen again. That was not going to happen in the eighth grade. And I went to like fucking. I went to Sacred, you know, uh, Bob Hurley's camp from uh-huh. St. Anthony's. I went to there. In the eighth grade, I actually got picked to go to five-star basketball camp. He yeah, got me I hooked up that. with Wein- Weinstein. Uh-huh. So I was pretty good, my my fucking, it's not Weinstein, it's a different, he just died. Finkelstein, he was like the Jewish guy that you <laughs> called whenever you needed a college basketball player. He yeah. would pick you in those days. So he, he ran a camp in the summer. It's called Five-Star Basketball Camp. Which, like, the summer I was there, Dominique Wilkins was a counselor. Like, you didn't know, but you knew. They were in college. Like, my particular counselor in my room was Kenny Denard. Kenny Denard actually started on that fucking Duke team. It was, I was in the eighth grade, and I still remember one outstanding thing about Kenny Denard. That it, it was hot as shit. It was Pittsburgh. It's hot. It's humid in June, and he would always have a hooded sweatshirt. And one day I go, why do you fucking wear a hooded sweatshirt? And he turned around and bent over. And in his helm, in his hood, he had a baby skunk. You're fucking shit. No, man. that's the first time I ever, and I, he let me pet it. And then he brought it in the room. And I remember that that song by Rick James was the hottest song. Like, like I when I came from Cuba, my, when I came from Cuba, I don't think white kids understood me. So my only friends were black. And my best, best friend in the world was black. Last week, somebody at Nyack, New York, a black guy came up to me, shook my hand, pulled me down, and he goes, what these white motherfuckers don't know is you're just an old school nigga. And he walked away, and I go, what the fuck did that guy just say to me? And I went back to the hotel, and he goes, right. Because that was my first exposure. Like, I learned uh-huh. from these brothers, and then, but then I lost contact with brothers. And then I started playing basketball again, and that was the summer that Rick James came out with his first fucking hit, and it was called You and I. And, you know, you had, like, rest periods where you you woke up at 7, you didn't eat breakfast, and you did sprints Mm -hmm. and drills. Suicides, yeah. Suicides. No, they had a specific... No, I was Joe Namath, football camp. That had suicides, and then you went to breakfast, and then you broke down the move of the day, Mm -hmm. rebound, and Mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon you just played ball and shit like that. But whenever that song by Rick James went on, black people lost their fucking mind. And they were playing black music on the radio. Yeah. But it's called You and I. Have you have you ever heard You and I? I've heard it, but yeah. Then, like the beginning of it. Uh-huh. Like, black people could be guarding each other. 
Like that summer was like <laughs> Dominic Wilkins. It was all these. It's black awesome when you when you have those those songs that go with your ball. With your ball like We came out to "Time for Some Action" by Redman every time. I still hear that song. I get hype. I get butterflies. I'm like, oh, let's go, let's go. Time for some action. Time, time for some time for some action. I love all. That and I would shit. try and dunk, but I couldn't dunk. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and if I actually did, because I was always right on the cusp, because I couldn't really palm the ball that well. If I did dunk, I for sure airballed my first shot because I was so fired up that I dunked in warm ups. I had kicks. Yeah. I, I had kicks, so I could grab the rim. Mm-hmm. Downtown North Bergen, I, I missed a dunk one time. Like, <laughs> I got really light, like 168, and I could get up there. Yeah. Like I, when I went to Sacred Heart, uh, whatever, St. Anthony's basketball camp, which was called Superstar Basketball Camp, I went on standing rebound that week. So that's why he was recruiting me to try to go to St. Anthony's. He mm-hmm. was recruiting me, a kid, Whitey O'Donnell, and Chuck McBreen, who showed up in my short Nyack. He's the coach of Ramapo Division Three. They just went to the Final Four in Division Three. He stuck with it. He's a fucking coach. I got a couple buddies. One guy, Greg Horenda, coaches. I went to Five Star with him. We went yeah. on the bus together. He was from uh, St. Peter's Prep. But I used the blueprint from my basketball days for comedy, which was... You know, you play every day. Like, yep. you just play all day. I would get up and shoot 300 shots like Jerry West first. I would find, like, somewhere that nobody would go. I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't put down a basketball until I made three three-pointers in a row. And that was my rule from when I was, like, 11 years old to when I was 18 years old. Like, if I touched it, I had to make three in a row. See, when I, I was growing left. up, there was no three-pointers. And sometimes, and sometimes that would take me three for three minutes you know i'd just knock them out sometimes if i was off i'd be out there 15 minutes 20 minutes frustrated as shit hit two miss the third damn it i just want to go but i had that ritual and and it you know i ended up being one of the best three-point shooters in texas That's from that crazy. same ritual so anything you take deep you like you learn those lessons learn from those it lessons. doesn't matter what it is whether it's basketball or ping pong or violin or whatever take it deep don't just dabble take something deep if you if you're a dad and you have kids or mom have your kids take anything deep because the lessons come when you really push to that you know upper limit of what's possible. That's crazy. I went deep with basketball, and I got to tell you something. My freshman year, like it was a no brainer. If you looked at all eight schools, I was going to be one of the starting forwards on the freshman. It was a no brainer. Mm-hmm. St. Anthony's wanted me. I would have had to start North American. <laughs> oh, this guy just didn't like me. Coaches. My freshman year, and I was third team. And it was the hardest fucking lesson that I ever had. Like, when you're touted to do that. And you know what? He had his reasons. I was an offensive machine, and I could rebound. But my defense was a little weird because I was always going for the steal. Mm -hmm. I knew how to hold your shirt. I knew how to hold your shorts. My uh, seventh grade teacher was, he's still in the Hall of Fame for free throws. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. 